to the Staff Tech Turbo Shed, I'm going to talk about compressor housings. But before anything else, let me remind you why this is called the Turbo Shed. This video isn't going to be about the basics of what a compressor housing is and does, because I presume you guys already know that. And it's not going to be full of, like, science and irrelevant facts that it really don't matter even if they are advanced what this is about is some interesting tuning related tricks and tips that i've learned over the years to do with compressor housings that really do make a worthwhile difference first up let's have a look at the different compressor housing inlet designs starting with the most normal design this is a conventional non-ported single hole inlet like you'll see on the vast majority of production cars. Well technically, ever so slightly at least, this is the most efficient design of compressor housing. This is by a very small margin and the potential downsides outweigh the benefits of this design. So if you've got the option, this wouldn't really be my first choice. Having said that, I'm a big fan of the sound of turbo chatter when you let off the throttle, or dose as you as is all call it. And conventional non-ported compressor inlets like this do actually make the loudest chatter sounds in my experience. It's that woo woo, you know what I'm saying? Next up is this design, probably the most common in aftermarket turbos these days, and that's called a ported shroud or anti-surge inlet. The purpose of this compressor inlet is to help prevent on-throttle compressor surge, and it actually does a really good job of that in my experience. It helps prevent compressor surge by bleeding off some of the air back to the compressor inlet via the slot machine just after the compressor inducer. That is just that ring there. Which feeds back to the outer circle of the inlet, which is this bit. On throttle compressor surge is, you might want to overcomplicate things with issues that don't really matter to you guys. It's where the compressor is trying to give the engine more air than it can handle. And not only is this very bad for the health of the turbo, it's really crap for performance too and feels much like a misfire killing your acceleration. You can reduce or eliminate on throttle compressor surge even without an anti-surge inlet by slowing down how fast the turbo spools up or by making the engine breathe better with say a bigger turbine housing or different spec cams. But all of these are compromises, ones that can be quite severe too and when you can simply eliminate it by just having an anti-surge compressor inlet that's the obvious choice. With modern turbos spooling up fast and providing more air than ever before, compressor surge is more of an issue than ever, which is why anti-surge inlets are very commonplace on most aftermarket turbos these days. The final bonus of an anti-surge inlet is the noise. The whistles go woo! While turbo chat is generally reduced with one of these, turbo spool up noise is hugely magnified with a ported inlet like this, which is a nice bonus really. The third style of compressor inlet to look at is this one, which looks like a conventional anti-surge inlet, but doesn't actually have the air bleed slot machined in at all. And these aren't common, but they do exist. I mean, I'm showing you one right now, and I've got quite a few here from different companies, and I have literally no idea why they exist. They do nothing of any purpose. They just look anti-surge when they're not. Decoration, man. It's just yeah. for decoration. That's, that's it. it and that's all, man. We do it for decoration. you have it on your car? Yeah, I got it on my car. But don't accidentally buy a turbo you think has got an anti-surge inlet when in fact it's just a, a fake anti-surge like this. Final variation of compressor inlet I'm going to show you is actually how the majority of anti-surge inlets look when they're fit to an OEM production vehicle. And that's with some kind of trumpet shaped ring around the outer edge this bit here. Well some sellers try and call these things race covers which obviously helps them sell turbos by saying stuff like that. In reality all they are is silences to quieten down the loud spool at noise all anti-surge compressor and let's make. It doesn't completely silence it but as OEM customers don't find super loud turbo spool up as awesome as we all do. Some neighbors are saying way too loud. That's only in the morning. Yeah. He's supposed to be up cooking breakfast or somebody and so that's like an alarm clock. Understandable why they do it. On whole set turbos, the silence of ring is held in by a simple circlet and you can remove it within a few seconds with a screwdriver. But on turbos like this one, a Borg Warner, it's much more tricky. With some you have to at least drill out a, a rivet or two around the edge and then pull it out. On many others, this included, not only is it riveted in, but it is also screwed in and it is incredibly hard to remove, probably not worth the effort. 
The almost trumpet shape of this silencer ring is claimed by some to give a performance benefit, and in theory I agree it might do, but I've never ever seen testing proving it does anything performance wise good or bad, which tells me if it does improve performance it's very slight. Generally, I remove them just because I like the really loud spool-up sounds on turbos. An AC Transit bus driver told us the noise is so loud you can't even hear the siren from an approaching ambulance. Next up, compressor housing AR numbers. Like this. Or like this. You almost solely see compressor housing AR numbers on Garrett or Garrett-based turbos. And they're often quoted by people in the for sale adverts for the turbos. But let me tell you, they mean nothing. In theory at least, a larger AR compressor housing is beneficial to performance for any given compressor wheel size, but aside from a very few rare exceptions, there's no larger housing available for your turbo, so it's totally irrelevant really. There's nothing more pointless in life than worrying about stuff you can't change, so don't worry about it. You won't see compressor housing size numbers on whole set or almost any other brand turbo, purely because they fit the correct size compressor housing it's big enough to do the job and that is it job done so just ignore it turbo housing AR well yeah that's one of the most vital things about a turbo but that's for a different episode so, so stay tuned for that one a lot of turbos that originate in the OEM commercial vehicle world whole sets and board warners especially have b-band flanges on the compressor outlet rather than what most of us use which is a normal push fit hose connection like that I've lost count of the times people have asked me what size V-band these various compressor outlets use and my answer is usually the same every time. I've no idea because I don't use them. While for some turbos, whole set especially, getting hold of a suitable outlet isn't that hard. You just need the correct part number and give Cummins UK a call and order the thing. Although it's never cheap and, and it doesn't suit all applications, but luckily there's a much easier solution. On the vast majority of V-band outlet compressor housings, 15 minutes work with a Dremel or similar and you can machine down the V-band flange here to become a normal smaller lip that you can use with a conventional hose and a hose clamp with no problem at all. So you simply machine this big lip down to be a small one like that and you can simply slip a hose over, put a jubilee clip and do it up tight and it will work just like any other one. Another option which can be useful when the V-band outlet is very close to the main housing like this is simply to get the style and angle outlet of your choice TIG welded onto the end of the V-band flange. Obviously this means you need to be able to TIG weld, or know some of you can, but if you can it's literally a 5 minute job. If you did want to use the V-band then like I said you can call Cummins and order something like this which does correctly mate up to the outlet. But this isn't a cheap or easy solution and you need quite a lot of room in your engine bay to fit such a large bend. And that's about it for this episode. Don't forget to like and comment on the video. And if you've got any questions about it, feel free to ask those questions in the comments also. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. There'll be a whole lot more coming in the near future. Literally hundreds of videos to come. On the next episode of Turbo Shed, I'll give you the lowdown on the important factors of the next logical part of a turbo, which will be compressor wheels. See you later.